Hello again and welcome back to the Wheelchair Tennis Masters 2021 sponsored by NEC and Uniqlo. It's another beautiful day, day four of competition here at the USDA National Campus in Lake Nona, Florida. We're open today's coverage on center court with a quad singles match, the last of the round robin portion. It'll be Andy Lapthorne of Great Britain versus Kim from Korea. I'm Paul Walker. I'm joined this morning by the master of wheelchair tennis, <laughs> Jason Harney. Is that your official title? No, uh, no, that's the name of the event, Paul. Oh, that's the name of the event. I got those two <laughs> a little bit confused, but I believe it should be your title. I don't know Jason about that. Jason master of wheelchair tennis. <laughs> uh, thank you, Paul. As always, an honor, a pleasure to spend time with you in the booth. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Hey, so got a great matchup today, and it's uh, it's a bit of a lopsided matchup historically. Andy's had the, the better of Kim. 7-0 uh, and o in their head-to-head -head matchups. You would expect that Andy, uh, having been former world number one, kind of Grand Slam champion, and uh, a little yeah. bit more of a uh, well-established resume, that today would be a good day for him. We've seen him throughout the competition looking pretty sharp. Finished up uh, some of yesterday's activity with him on court in doubles when he was looking looking good. We saw a little bit of him yesterday in singles as well. And uh, I think all things go according to his plans. He'll take care of business today. It'll be Kim who's got the tougher assignment, but will be scrappy, will be tough, and uh, will put up a good fight. No doubt. Kim is a scrapper. We know that. He's smart. He's got some wisdom. Does have a few years on Andy. Are, are you calling yeah. guys? I'm calling age guys who are guys your age and, and beyond are, are wise. wise. Appreciate that. That's about what you all you got. Great Catch shot. your wisdom. Great shot of Kim <laughs> opening up with the serve right there. And it is Kim, the right-hander from Korea. And Lapthorne, the lefty from Great Britain. It's a little windy today, so it'll be interesting to see you know, who that plays favorite to. You know, Andy, obviously, from an island. <laughs> he used to win uh, all the time. Uh, but Kim, his style of play, uh, it may help him out a little bit. And it's Lepthorne who opens it up with an easy return of serve winner. I think you're going to see Andy with his speed, a little bit of that leftiness. Um, I think he's going to, you know, try and take control early and stay out in front. I mean... It's a little hot today too, so yeah, a little I bit. think he could. Uh, he'd like to take care of his business and get off the court, conserve some energy. Yeah. Uh, again, just to kind of set the scene for this whole week of activities. This is a dual event essentially. You've got what is oftentimes the NEC Singles Masters running concurrently with the Uniqlo Doubles Masters. So a full week of both singles and doubles for these participants. And a uh, few players are in just for the doubles portion, but the majority of players are in for both the singles and doubles. And that's a heavy load um, to go for a f full week, seven, eight days, yeah. singles, doubles, singles, doubles. And, and Andy's certainly in the mix in both of these. So he's expending yeah. a lot of energy. You know, an event like this, you know, every, every match is tough. You know, it's not your run of the not run of the mill stock pro event, but you know where you're going to get different, a little bit of different level of play in your opening rounds. Here, I mean, you're drawing one of the top eight players in the world right out of the gate, and every round is more of the same. So nice forehand there by Kim. Yeah, I'm hearing that from the players, it's just uh, everything. It adds up as the week goes on. Tough he, matches every day. He levels the score here. Nice serve. Gets a good look. Pushes in. Hits the target. Gets things to 30 all. I think the more time Kim Sten spends either on top of the baseline or just in front, it's good for him. I think if he starts getting pushed back with Andy's high balls, I think that's where things are going to get get really tough. Yeah, going to be tough for him today. Really doesn't possess the overwhelming firepower to maybe right. put Andy into some uncomfortable positions. Right. Has to rely on a little bit of savvy and maybe a little bit of. Andy being off, but right now, Andy's just going to continue to serve him up, and Kim gets caught in no man's land. A little bit too far forward, huh? It's Andy with the lob. Winner off the backhand side for a first break opportunity of the day. I think you said it well. Andy being one of the, you know, one of the greats in the sport for a very long time. 
it seems like you know top four top five players if you're gonna if you're gonna beat one of those guys you really do have to have something you know you need to have a strength whether it's speed or just overall power something that's gonna garner their respect um, I think if he feels that Andy's definitely polished enough to where if he doesn't feel like you can hurt him uh, he's gonna be good he's gonna be real good and just swing away and, and do what he does you know, as we think about the pool here of players uh, that could potentially threaten Andy, it starts with the guys that are currently seated ahead of him. And that would be the two young Dutchmen, and Schroeder and Fink, who possess speed and power off both sides. That would be David Wagner, who possesses serve, return capabilities, uh, court savvy, volleying abilities. He always gives uh, Andy a tough time. That's always been historically a great matchup. You've got Zagino, who's got some pretty big firepower off of both sides. Yeah. So those are the guys that, that will threaten Andy a little bit because they do, as you mentioned, possess some skill set yeah. that can threaten him. Yeah, that's right. Vice versa, because he has, a, obviously, a skill set as well. Lefty moves well, can hit big when necessary, can spin the ball up high. A lot of, a lot of skills. Yep, that's right. Lap for him at the first break of the day. Now to serve. Him here, uh, really not much of a threat in the singles portion, but uh, teamed up with Koji Sugino of Japan, and they have made a pretty formidable doubles team, because Kim plays a particular role in that, where he can sit back, cover his side of the court, throw some balls, stay steady. That is, that is a skill set that he does possess. And then Sugino has some firepower, so the balance between the two of them it's a pretty nice double steal. Yeah, the old spiker setter yeah, right. setup, right? The volleyball analogy. But it does, it's traditionally in doubles, it's a great it's a great setup. But it seems like now the very, very best teams have firepower coming off both sides. Both players can go forward. It's just uh, a much more complete team. But that the traditional setup that that uh, he and Koji have is, is it can be very, very effective as well. Great forehand into the corner there. No answer from Kim. It's Andy Lap for an out, 30-15. And he seems to be swinging pretty freely here early, um, which is going to prove to be tough for Kim early here to try and get some sort of foothold into this match. <laughs> Too much air on that one, and yeah. kind of like yesterday, where you can't really see the wind down inside the bowl of the of the stadium, but once that ball gets up above the wall, the wind will take charge of it. It is blowing at Kim's back, so that one there just pushed long. Two chances now for Latthorn to hold, and who's out to two love? Double faults. Point for big point for Kim here to try and get it back to Deuce. Not not drop that second game, go down two games. Sensing the out wide lefty serve. There it is. Kim, great backhand return. Great return there. Clearly one of the better shots we've seen from him so far in the match. Really nice. Sitting on that one. Yeah, swung pretty freely. Another good return. Just long there. Not enough spin off the Kim forehand. Looking to continue to keep Andy back and pressed back behind the baseline. Just not quite finding the mark yet in the early going. Swinging pretty freely though, which is a good sign. Point there by Kim. This is the mark at the big moment. 
those are the points you got to win, right? Pretty much. You go longer, yeah. you got to start winning some of those. Yeah. In charge there and had an opportunity, but didn't convert. Doesn't get it back to Deuce, and now it's a hold for Lapthorne in 2-0. Interesting when you're playing the sport, you know, when you're even or you're down a game, how important that next game is. I mean, uh, somehow wins that game or even drops a game, he's down two. And so that happens enough. Matches get away pretty quick. So it's a really important game for Kim here in his first set. Dig in here, get on the board. Yeah, they have a 7-0 career head-to-head -head record, but it's been stretched out over a lot of years, so there really hasn't been a lot of frequency of late in matchups between these two. Yeah. Uh, the most recent was a straight set victory by, by Lapthorne, uh, one prior to that, but plus a couple years ago, went three sets. That seems like a, 2019 seems like a long time ago, Jason. Feels like a decade ago, Paul. Anything pre-2020 seems like a long time ago. <laughs> it sure does. 2020 came along and time started to stand still. Yeah, a little bit. But we're, we're slowly but surely getting back, and that is a good thing. Oddly enough, tennis has seen an uptick during the during no question the pandemic about that. time. You know, activities outdoors and separated from other people, not big groups. The sport lends itself to that. And so we've at least had to see a benefit in this, in the world of tennis because of COVID. Got to get some upside for that thing. It's been actually a tremendous time for tennis in the industry, you know, wheelchair tennis included. Uh, and it's funny as a, as, a, as a business here at the USTA, we do look at retail, you know, sales of rackets and shoes and balls. Nice serve by Kim. Good serve there. Gets Good the game. return of serve error from Lapthorne. Those standards are important in the industry, and tennis is definitely booming right now. And I can tell you the business here at the national campus is high. Yeah, there's been a steady stream of activity here on Sunday when we showed up. There was some big time USTA nationals uh, happening. 9.0 and 6.0 I think we're going on and finishing up and now we've got a pro circuit event running here. You've seen some uh, USTA league play pouring into the campus for their morning matches and activity. Yep. Kids in the evening you've seen a, just a slew of parents coming in with kids for their lessons and their time. That's great to see. Yeah, it is. It's like we're back to life the new addition at the campus of the uh, Padel courts. Padel, pickleball. Pickleball, some other just, just side racket sports that are growing and growing rapidly. A lot of activity here. Good return there. Yeah, right on the line yeah. there. Forcing Kim to kind of chase that down. He needs to be kind of pushing forward, be able to drive anything if he's going backwards. Doesn't really have the strength to no, and that's Andy's, that's been Andy's bread and butter for a decade, is that high roller to the backhand side, and he's able, uh, I attribute a lot of that practice coming from his doubles game, where he's just going high and away to that backhand. It's just tough for everybody. Andy's done great with it for over a decade. to control from down there. Yep, again, kind of out of position, and there's yeah. another break, and it's Lapthorne, 3-0 on the first changer. You know, it's interesting, Paul, when we talk about the national campus here, and for those of you who have never been to this campus, it is the largest tennis center in the world. It sits on 65 acres here in Orlando and Lake Nona, um, and there are approximately 100 courts and we've calculated it out that you could have in multiple surfaces with the hard true, which is the green clay, and then we have you know stock hard courts, so this plexi cushion here on, on the side that we're on. Uh, but with a collegiate center and player and coach development here, we've calculated out you could have two 128 draws on multiple surfaces, two collegiate matches, the family fun center with the pickleball courts, the kid courts, the padel, 
And there is a great view of the National oh, Campus that Jason is. so beautifully described in his there view as a yes. tour operator, which is good. This is <laughs> I'm actually flying the drone right now, Paul. This is Orlando's uh, <laughs> most recent theme park right here. There it is. And yeah. Disney's got nothing on the National Campus. Yeah. That is a beautiful aerial view of the entirety of the campus. This is a shot over the headquarters and then into the Collegiate Center that Jason, Jason talked about right there, home of the UF UCF Knights. National campus. Incredible place. Gorgeous. Yeah, I think we've calculated you can probably have approximately, I don't know, three to four hundred people playing at once in one place. It'd be absolutely incredible. Another good serve. Left into the body. Kim trying to find the line somehow there. Down line return is pretty devastating in wheelchair tennis. You know, if you can get it there, it's very, very effective. But oh, I saw a lot of it yesterday in the uh, <laughs> Fernandez and Houdet match. Those guys are just relentless. Yeah. Uh, you know, back and forth, and, and you know they take their lumps. It's amazing how resilient they are. They take their lumps when the guy who's receiving does his job, gets to that spot, takes control, maybe wins easy on a return, but they don't blink. They just go back to work, pump the next serve in take their chances and hope yeah. to get started on their terms. Yep. Good high ball there. We've seen that for so long on Andy. That high loopy backhand. Well, he's going to be tough from that side yeah. too because he can spin it and, and, the wind. Gonna, and then the wind's going to take it and yeah. go from there. Get a little added booster. You are right when you talk about resiliency, though. I mean, honestly, that, that barrage of down-the-line returns, one after the other, and now it comes down to who can, who can execute their serve enough to kind of neutralize that and, and to, be, to accept that it happens and just move on, next serve, next serve. Yeah, that was pretty much here on center court yesterday. That was the match of the day, you know, going three sets a day. Uh, taking the first and Fernandez having to battle back and get the second and then push it to the third but it was some it was some impressive tennis from both of those those guys you know youth versus a little bit of age there as well oh, man that's definitely not a kid not a kid and, and and he does not he holds up at that level which is incredible You're going against a 27 year old like Gustavo Fernandez in his prime and at 50 years old Stefan Uday not dropping off in level not just being a guy that's hanging out in the draw. He is still pushing the young guns in the division. And it's it's impressive. He is he is an elite tennis player and at age 50. And that is that is really remarkable. Yeah. A great tennis background, you know, starting as a junior player. Uh, great shot right there. Great the touch. Court. Nice and easy. And pretty easy for love for Lapthorne exactly what we talked about early on, just take care of his business. Maybe gonna head off to Disney Springs for the rest of the day. <laughs> head to the Uniqlo store. Head to the Uniqlo store, exactly go, go, right. Go pick up a shirt or two. That would be the smart thing to do. <laughs> we are very appreciative of our two title sponsors and a fantastic long time partnership on the weekend with Wheelchair Tennis and of course Uniqlo here sponsoring the doubles portion, but also sponsoring the Wheelchair Tennis Tour worldwide grateful for our partnership with those two amazing corporations. Yep. I think NEC's uh, at the 30-year mark. Incredible. In support of the Wheelchair Tennis uh, Tour and Masters, and the Uniqlo now is pushing six or seven years, both on, you know, being a major title sponsor for the entire Wheelchair Tennis Tour and the Doubles Masters. So, yeah, both fantastic companies that continue to, uh, to give and support. Big return right there, oh, swinging pretty freely. Showing off a little bit of yeah. his other skill set, which is ability to drive the ball when when required. Hmm. Doesn't have to do it that often, just needs to mix that in like that. There's a great look. Yeah, and pushing right through it, huh? Hitting and moving at the same time. Pretty calm, yeah. When you're, when you're up for love, why not take a couple rips? Yeah. Have some fun. He took his eye off the ball there a little bit. Maybe he was anticipating. Gives a look up to his coaches in the stands, a little chuckle. When you're up for love and cruising along, you can afford to have a laugh or two and a miss like that. 
it was 3-4, and he makes that. I'm not sure he has the same response. his speed and touch right there. Yep. Kim doing a nice job of coming forward, punching a volley, just not quite enough. Andy, too much speed there. Yeah, great anticipation. Andy, maybe at one time, was one of the faster players on tour. He's still fast, but got great instincts. Saw that open court volley coming. Little overplayed there. Liked the way the last forehand rip went over on the deuce side. Thought it might double down with it. Went down all right. Again, the luxury that you have playing with a lead. Good feeling. Playing from behind is never fun. Never that enjoyable. Some players do it well. Some players play Some, better from yeah. behind. It's an odd phenomenon in tennis. It is a little bit. But it's not a good way to make a living. No, yeah, it's tough. Utilizing the two bounces there and forcing Kim to commit to a location. Andy rolling it to the open court and five love. Nary a sweat. No, he's, he's very comfortable right now. As we kind of inch a little bit closer to the end of this set, we do have a full slate of activity again today, of course, as uh, we have each and every day here at the Wheelchair Tennis Masters full of activity, starting with Andy Lapthorne, mentioned and Kim here on center court, followed by women's doubles. A great matchup there between the two Japanese players and the Mathewson and Schuker, the combined USA GB team. Then men's doubles, the young Martin De La Puenta and his mentor, Gustavo Fernandez versus Dermot Bailey. And oh, the young gun, Takito Oda from Japan. First look at him. And then we'll finish up again with the dynamic pairing of Gordon Reed and Alfie Hewitt versus Alex Cataldo, Chile, and American Casey Ratzliff. That'll be a great finish to our day. And we hope that you'll join us throughout some great tennis, Paul. Wicked Wednesday here at the wicked Wheelchair Wednesday. Tennis Masters. Some of those players are wicked good. Yeah. I'd say up at best. And, and the doubles is so much fun. It's so much fun to watch. And yeah, we had some fireworks tennis. last night with the with the Dutch Dutchies, team huh? of Egbrink and Sheffers versus Hewitt and Reed. Really some lights out first set in particular with some lights out doubles. Amazing. Amazing high level, and then things kind of settled down in favor of uh, Team GB there. Hewitt and Reed were just too much, too strong. And kind of yeah, what a talented group. Rolled four Dutch players team. right there. Yeah, a lot of talent. But we'll see them again. See those guys again yeah. today. Hey. Hewitt and Reed getting pretty comfortable here with center court. Number yes, one they are. Team in the world. And Had a nice year. They seem to have a nice year every year. <laughs> I think too, but. I think it was a Grand Slam year for them. Yeah, Grand Slam came up, you know, and not the, not the, not the, yeah, I know where their thoughts are. They're still in Tokyo a little bit. Oh, Haven't come up again, just, just a little bit shy against the amazing French team of Houdet and Pfeiffer. What a great team they are. Back to back gold, yep. Rio and Tokyo. That's wow. impressive. That is impressive. Both tremendous matches, both Rio and Tokyo, both yeah. incredible. Yeah, never, seldom, if ever, not an amazing match between those. Yeah, players. no doubt. I could see it here again. Huh? Seldom ever see a clunker. No. They have, they have, they Doubles have. is just such an interesting dynamic. I mean, it's really, if you've never watched wheelchair tennis before, and singles is great, because it's singles, we all enjoy that, but doubles, there's, there's a dynamic to it in wheelchair tennis that is so much fun because Wow, that point for catching the back of the line there. And with that, catching the first, first set. 6-0. Oh. That was pretty quick. Uh, Six love. You know, very businesslike here today, as we kind of anticipated. 
Yeah. But uh, yeah, well. the dubs, Paul. I love it. Yeah, I right. love watching it. it. Doesn't matter who's playing it. And I just think the coverage is so good and the length of rallies is so good, the creativity, it's just uh, the, the power, the speed, it's just so much fun. And it's not, it's, I can't say it's radically different than obviously high level able body tennis, but it's just different. And it's just, uh, and people notice they don't hear the squeaks of the shoes. There's not that sound out here. It's a little different. And it's just, uh, it's so enjoyable to watch. A little bit of what's going on on the outer courts here this morning. Some additional quad singles. Americans are doing well. Yeah, it's David Wagner up over Ani to Silva, four to two in the early going, and it's Brian Barton, that early little lead over Sam Schroeder, which is would be a <coughs> mega accomplishment there if Barton could upset Schroeder, the number one seed here in the tournament. But it's in the early going, and we'll see if the young Dutchman settles down or if Brian Barton indeed yeah. continues to put on a. Wicked good performance here on Wicked Wednesday. That would be a wicked upset. Yeah. <laughs> that would be an amazing upset. Ryan's playing well, so he is. I'm sure he's got his sights set. That's his mentality, and that's the right mentality going into that match with a plan and yep. executing. And apparently, in the early going, he's doing it. You know, he and Sam have shared uh, the same coach for a while, and um, I know they've trained quite a bit together. So I know they know each other's game inside and out. And as anything, it comes down to execution. You may have a great game plan, great coaching, but ultimately it comes so, down to... So a coach who coaches actually, both players and now has them playing each other, he's, how does he He's sitting on the navigate. other side of the lake over there. He's yeah. watching from afar right now. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a neutral position. He uh, Probably no clapping, nothing, and charting probably both sides of the court, my guess. And, um, and at the end of the day, at he the goes end of the to day, one guy and says, I knew you were going to win today. <laughs> yeah, go. And he goes to the other guy and says, I thought you were going to win today. I thought you were going to win today. Yeah. Yeah. It can become political, can't it? <laughs> yeah, it's gotta, a delicate balance. It's either. a delicate balance, but uh, you hope their coach has done a nice job with both of them. And Clearly. And this, uh, I, you know, something that Yope is really good at is getting them both to enjoy playing. And I think Brian's, you know, being a little older has been a little bit rejuvenated. and. And Sam is moving in, uh, he's in his prime. I mean, it will be for the next decade, so he's done a nice job with both of them. Big forehand return to start the second set there by Lapthorne. I think him a little bit disturbed by the, the call at the baseline, but whenever it's not going your way, you're pretty much disturbed by anything. Yeah. He just needs to get a little volatile. Get on, the, get on the board here. And that forehand error is not the answer. Sometimes we get into that mentality, we're going to try and get it all back in a hit or two, and it's just, you know, it's a process of trying to find your way back into a match. Andy's not giving him much to work with, though. Just kind of right, you know, stay in the course here, poking balls down the line off the returns, and Kim trying to go for a little bit more because you feel you have to. You feel like you're at a point in the match where you gotta gotta make something happen at this point, or it's gonna be over quick. Good play there. There we go. Again, having a little bit of success. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah. please tell me that one was in. <laughs> He's like, I don't like the call you gave me on this side. Please tell me that side. I need one. Feel me, feel me up. Just gotta get it going. At some point, you have to get to a point in match where high risk tennis is the only option. Playing, you know, staying the course of what he's doing, he's going to lose this match. And maybe it only needs you know? to be for a couple of moments, right? Just, just yeah. to break the. Momentum or break somebody's rhythm. That's I've got to step up. You know, probably not likely to be able to sustain it. But hey, for two games, I got to be on point. Let's go and flat shot. Right on. Right on. Got it dialed in pretty well here today as he goes, reels off his seventh straight game. Quick shout out to the Atlanta Braves for having won 
the World Series last night over the Houston Astros. For those who are following along at home, tracking Major League Baseball, the season is now over. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? I didn't know that. I'm kidding, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd follow it, but uh, I did I didn't First I didn't World Championship for the Atlanta Braves since 1995. Wow. It's amazing. Amazing. Oh, is that for John Smoltz era? Oh, that's back to the heyday. Yeah, that's back to TBS baseball right there. Yes! Good shot there. Okay. Need a lot more of that. Good for the city of Atlanta. Yes. Time you're a, a world champion in baseball, basketball, football, soccer, whatever it may be. Wheelchair tennis. Wheelchair tennis champion in your hometown. <clears throat> Any kind. It's, it's a, a great thing for the city. Zip on that one. A little big on the second <coughs> serve, too. Kind of yeah, pretty aggressive. That was. But when you're loose and feeling it, have the luxury of seven straight games, why not? That's right. That's kind of what we've talked about. He is in the comfort zone right now. He's very comfortable. It's funny when we talk about cities. Um, you know, we got the four grand slams. We talk about wheelchair tennis specifically. You know. Having wheelchair tennis at all four, so you got Melbourne, Paris, uh, oh, uh, London, or Wimbledon, and, and New York. And then on top of that, with World Team Cup, which is our equivalent for Davis Cup and Billie Jean King Cup, I mean, uh, cities get the opportunity to host that every year uh, globally. It's just the expansion of wheelchair tennis, and, and fortunately here in Orlando, we've hosted the Masters for our third time and serve again. Uh, Another yeah. hold there for Lapthorne, and it's eight straight now as he continues yeah. to just cruise through Kim here in our opening match on center court. I think different than some of the other adaptive sports or Paralympic sports in the world, but your tennis really does have a, a large footprint in the world where I think a lot of other sports maybe just don't have that coverage that we do, and, and a lot of that's because of the Grand Slams, because of this event and the World Team Cup. Uh, the para pan american games the asian para games there's just a lot of uh, presence uh, in the sporting world in wheelchair tennis and i think that's what separates us really or separates wheelchair tennis from the rest of the pack uh, so are you saying that this is the best adaptive sport in the world i'm say gonna say it, it. Say no, it. i don't care who's listening all my wheelchair basketball friends para swimming para track you name it i think tennis really is leading the way and has for a very very long time Volley there. Yeah, you kind of lose there. And gets a little. Get a laugh off of the coach. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get on board with you and say it is. It's the best. It's the best. The best I, I We're that. biased. We're going to admit well, it. People will say that. Oh, it's you two. Uh, like, you make know, a counter argument. We, we, yeah, counter it. Come back at me and look at the, you know, the dollars invested. And I think really the, you know, when the Grand Slams came on board in like 2004, two for Australia, but really 2005, there was a real turn with Wimbledon and the U.S. Open coming on board, and then the French followed the next year. It changed everything, because what happens is, you know, this side of tennis all of a sudden is in front of the most well-educated tennis crowds in the world at the Grand Slams. And that changed, I think, you know, how people, you know, looked at this sport, and, and now look at the professionalism going back over 20 years. It's the quality of athletes and quality of play is just it's been enhanced and uh, athletes have always been good I think we've always said that you know go back to the Brad Parks and Randy Snows and the early years those guys were all great athletes oh, oh, oh look man. at that and it's Andy Lapthorne Kim with a little sniff here at 30 love and then Lapthorne gives him the old let cord winner thank you very much Kim's like please just come yeah, on, just right can I get anything going my I way get here? a break at all yeah. yeah that ball rolls the other way and he's looking yeah. at three chances to hold here and get on the board but right now he's still got work to do up 30 15 yeah. but 40 love would have been a much nicer position that 
that's two inches right there, and that's classic lap torn. It is. But you know, you are probably one of the true historians of the sport of wheelchair tennis and appreciators of the history of the sport. And uh, Brad Parks and those that, that have come before, just and, the, and just he's just one name among many yep. that we could we could throw out yep. there, and uh, they would be so proud. I know they are. They're so proud of where the sport has come over the years. And never would have in their wildest dreams, I don't think. I think any of days, us, any of us around. Even and we were in days. a good, we're in a good place. I and mean, I even say even even a decade ago, I think the sport was in a good place. But I think the growth that's coming, and I would, I think it's safe to say all Paralympic sport is starting to get. Uh, notoriety in the push and I think a lot of that's corporate sponsorships and engagement now NEC and Uniqlo kind of leading the way but yeah, if you are watching the Olympic and Paralympic Games on TV and I know the Paralympic coverage was fantastic Toyota having tremendous presence there um, globally obviously uh, but on the Paralympic side they're becoming a major sponsor for for all Paralympic sports so it's just you know it's neat for us I think we've been around a long time to see that evolution happen real time it's not something that we're long gone and retired and done where all of a sudden there's a surge it's like we're kind of in the thick of it and i think in some ways we're helping you know push it forward which i think is really exciting and uh, hopefully something we'll all look back on and say how proud we were to be a part of that and, and helped uh, push everything forward wow. double fault prior to that forehand winner puts kim at a deficit and Lapthorn does not let him back in the door, and it is now 3-0, ninth straight, and uh, well on his way there. Andy Lapthorn is to opening up with another victory here on center court. Yeah, he's looking really good today. Great slow mo replay there of the Lapthorn forehand down the line winner. something he could do to disrupt Andy a little bit. You know, we talk about time management and punch him on the changeover. Punch him and punch him in the face on the changeover. <laughs> I, mean, I, I never thought of that. I didn't think of that out for all. I mean, 6030 -oh, might want to take it. Maybe away. use the racket, you know. Uh, oh, excuse me. I didn't see you there. Yeah. Yeah, pardon me. I, it's, it's disruption, right? You got to do something. And like we said, you play a little higher risk tennis, lower percentage, and try and disrupt. Um, and that's hard to do because Andy's hitting such a good ball. You don't have much to much of a ball to work with to do that. Again, why Andy's been one of the best players in the world for a very long time. Oh, nice pick up there. Shot. in the face. Oh, no, a good side to drop shot from. Win in the face, that's the side. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, another good surf. I mean, you feel that pressure having to come up with really good shots and Andy showing that speed, tracking balls down. We sometimes call those second efforts where, you know, maybe you get to the ball, maybe you don't, but you send that message to your opponent that you're going to have to be really good because if you're not, I'm on it. And that, that draws errors like it just did there. Like to instill that in the players that you coach? 
I would like to believe I try to. <laughs> I call it second efforts, and I, I think you could ask any of the players in our program. They've heard that for about 20 years or as long as they've been playing. And uh, I think any coach, we understand the value of effort and just tracking stuff down and making players play and, um, and, impact, and never the relenting. The impact that it has on your opponent. It's incredible. You're trying to alter behavior, right? That's all we talk about as coaches. How do you alter someone, especially if they're playing well? We need them to we need to change their behavior a little bit. And how do you do that? And number one on the list is effort. Because if you're playing someone, you know, kind of backs off on that effort, uh, you got them. And I maintain that effort from start to finish. You mentioned some names earlier. You know, Gustavo Fernandez being a great one. Gordon, Dita, Yui, they just, you know, a lot of, well, just a lot of the players in this event. You I'll know, give you an example of, of Gustavo. Uh, he test drove two walls yesterday, <laughs> one of them being concrete. That's no joke. The back wall, and then he took on the side wall in an attempt to get a ball. I think he was much more favorable on the side wall <laughs> in concrete. response to just that kind of bouncing off that one. But the concrete, I believe, is is still dented yeah, from sure. his impact yesterday. Okay. And, uh, but like, that's the willingness. That he's like, I don't care. There's a ball to be chased. Yeah, that's that's. And how do you teach that? Right. He just he has that gift. That's athleticism just, you know, has a goal in mind. And it can be a goal as simple as just get that ball and get it back in play. That's a pretty simple goal. He's like a Labrador retriever. Yeah, he sees a an ball, and he is like, that's it. That's my world that's mine. right there. That's my life. For that I moment. chase that thing until it's mine. Yeah. That's a shorter than a short-term goal. <laughs> it's like immediate. It's hard to teach that. And if you're working with an athlete that has that, man, you are fortunate. In the case of Fernandez, he doesn't just retrieve it. <laughs> then he turns into like a pit bull. He yes. goes from retriever to pit bull. He does. And then he just, just, just dominates yeah. with the power and dominates with what he, what he sends back to his opponent. Yeah. I think that, you know, I I credit Shingo Cuneta, who's world number one right now. He's not here this week. Um, but he's one of those guys who, and I, I think on the women's side, you could say Esther Vergeer was the one who really made that shift where. They found themselves occasionally in defensive positions, and they were able to go from defense to offense in one shot. And, and I think if you look at the younger players now, they all have that ability to be in. I think you got them, and all of a sudden, they just fire one up the line, or they're able to go short cross and from very, very difficult positions. And I think they train that way. You know, they train from those tough positions to be able to to come up with the goods. I know golfers do that. Golfers always practice from difficult lies, difficult positions, behind trees. Yeah, you see him you on know, TV just, making those miraculous shots, yes. and you think, how is that possible that they're hitting that shot? That's Whoa. right. Downhill, slant, yeah. uh, uphill, lie, uh, in the rough, you know, wind, of that. over water, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, yeah. And they it's not their first right. time hitting that shot. No. That's Flipping right. the club around backwards. I mean, some of the stuff that they do is remarkable. Yeah. And, and the way they see it, they see, and as a sight of a great athlete, a lot of these athletes here have that, whether it be in a particular part of the court. They have a, sense, they have a real sense of what's available. They know where their opponent is. Golfer does the same thing. They assess the situation. They assess everything, and they they, they visualize it happening. And, and typically, uh, they get real close. I don't think Kim uh, visualized that double fall no. right there. I'm not going to think he did that. No, but uh, he uh, he's feeling the pressure. Continue to struggle here. I think he's he's already maybe made the transition to tomorrow's doubles. But tough assignment here today for him. And, uh, continues to go in the direction of the Brit. You see that toss got away from him a little bit. Yeah, I think Andy needs any additional help here today. But uh, two double faults in a row. Certainly providing it. That's a five straight. Yeah, a little bit of resignation in the body language. That may have started a few games ago. <laughs> that wasn't, uh, that's not new right now. Yeah. Never able to get anything going here today. Not really. 
hit six straight. Yeah. And part of that's Andy, you know, having sure. that impact, just keeping the pressure on from the beginning. And it is 11 straight games for Andy Lapthorne, up 6-0-5-0. Six, six, oh, oh. I can't even imagine anybody losing a match, Jason, having been up 6-0-5-0. Oh, oh. Is there anybody you can think of that we know? I remember a match, uh, not in wheelchair tennis, but uh -huh. able-bodied tennis, able -body. Mary Jo Fernandez, American. Okay. There you go. Uh, was playing Gabriella Sabatini at the French Open, and I believe it was a quarterfinal match, which is interesting enough because they both have won several matches, so they're in the thick of it in the second week of a Grand Slam. Sabatini was up 6-0-5-0, I believe 40-15. There's the update on the outer courts as Jason courts. continues this amazing story. story. Yes, 6-4 <laughs> for six, Wagner, yeah. and it is Schroeder who has indeed come over the top of Barton, but hasn't closed out the first set yet. It still looks right like there. an incredibly competitive first set there between those two guys. But to matches. continue there. Uh, to continue, Joe. yes, 40-15. Uh, so when everyone says, it's a, is it possible? Mary Jo just went into a mode of just not missing, and um, Gabriella Sabatini, the great Argentinian, came off her perch a little bit, and Mary Jo toughed her out in three. Uh, won like 13 straight games or whatever it was. Uh, absolutely incredible. I think she did win a, either a 6-0 or 6-1 third set. And you wonder how that's possible at that level. It's possible. I'm not feeling that here today. I'm not seeing that either. <laughs> it's tough. I mean, no, I, I no we've knock all on Kim, but he's no. I mean, Joe. we've all I've, I've, we've all lost six oh six love matches, which yeah. just it's you a bad felt feeling. like yeah, yeah, just you felt like you couldn't get anything going. There were, and again, crediting Andy here. Andy could have maybe gone a little flat and disinterested, but he didn't do that. He's no, no, hasn't blinked. Not at all. Yeah, has remained focused, remained on task. Yeah. Great shot. Showing off. Down the line, backhand slice. Nice serve here. Sets that one up. Holds the pose. Snap a shot. Winner. Yeah, you get a that quick one. Decision. You Move know, forward. it's 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 one or the other, and yeah. you got to be quick. And if you get caught in between, goes right over you. Stuck. Yeah, he made the right decision. Yes, he did. He's made most of the most of the right decisions today, and now he's got three match point decisions, starting with this first one here. Why not out wide? Looking for the ace. Nope, it was T. Good for Sig Kim. And Andy a little overplayed, and he'll take it's it to the 15 match yeah. point. Gets another crack at it here. Huh? Serve body. There it is, Paul. And here we have it. Love and love, Andy Lapthorn. And join us for our on-court interview with the winner, Andy Lapthorn, bringing you that momentarily, and then course we'll make our transition into the remainder of the day thanks for being with us here on first match at center court a quick 6060 to Andy Lapthorne
center court 6060 kind of the Andy Lapthorn of old kind of everything working tell us a little bit about how it felt to be out here today and how you kind of produce that little magic outcome yeah I mean been searching for a performance for a while now um, obviously played a tough match on day one against Koji I managed to nick that 7-6 in the third and I knew that that was a really important result and an important match and then uh, to come out here today and play like that and find some form was, was really nice. Good. So you still got some work to do left, uh, I think, in the pool play. This was your second match, so you're going to have uh, a run at the top seed yet here in your pool play. But uh, having come out 2-0 and so far, that puts you in a great position to advance out of pool play and continue on here, potentially in the crossover. What are your thoughts on what's coming up for you later yeah, on? I think just for me, searching for performances at the moment rather than looking at results, I'm right. just searching for trying to play good tennis and trying to find my game again and see where I end up and hopefully I can get to the semis here and then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit more process oriented as a, as, re, as a opposed to result oriented. It's a pretty good approach for you, I think, when you can find your game. You're going to be competitive with about anybody out here. So I want to wish you luck the rest of the way. You're still in the singles, still strong in the doubles. Uh, you got a long week ahead of you still. It's only Wednesday. Congratulations on today. Good luck in finding your form the rest of the week and thanks for sharing some thoughts with us.
here on the USTA National Campus in Lake Nona, Florida. It's match number two right now. It's the women's doubles portion of the competition with Yui Kamiji and Saki Takamura taking on Dana Mathewson and Lucy Shuker. Paul Walker going at it solo right now. Lost the master of wheelchair tennis, Jason Harnett, who was with us on the last broadcast. But we'll continue our coverage. It's going to be a great women's doubles match as we continue in the round robin portion of the ladies' doubles. There's your look at what's going on here in Central Florida today. 78 degrees, the sun is rising, getting a little warmer. Clearly it's obviously sunny, a little bit of breeze, a little bit more than we had yesterday, and there it is, 1% chance of rain. We like it, it's gonna be dry, but uh, we'll get through day four here of the competition without a drop. They'll be sweating out on center court, but they won't be getting rained on, and that's a good thing for a tennis tournament. So, set the stage here as the players finish up some serves in their warm-up. At the bottom of your screen, on the left, serving right now, Dana Matthewson, and serving on the right, in the black, Lucy Shuker, Great Britain, Dana from the USA. And on the far side, we'll get a quick look of the two Japanese players, number two in the world, the lefty, Yui Kamiji, who we've seen already on center court in some singles portion of the competition, and her partner, Saki Takamura. Honestly say, I know a lot about three out of the four of these participants. I don't know much about Takamura, but I think we're gonna find out here. My sense of it is, Shuker and Matthewson's game plan will be to test drive Takamura and try to limit the damage that world number two and multiple Grand Slam winner Kamiji can do. There's Kamiji finishing up her warm up serves there. opened up their doubles competition with a loss. So this is a hypercritical match. A win here keeps some hopes alive for advancement into the semifinal crossover. A loss certainly does great damage to the hopes of either one of these teams. So a lot at stake here in this match. Should be some high intensity from the get-go. Great shot of the American and Great Britain duo there. Shuker on the left, Matthewson on the right. teamed up a number of times over the years at tournaments around the world, so they have some strong familiarity with one another. Don't think that Kamiji and Sakamura have teamed up all that much, but I'm sure also being countrywoman, fellow countrywoman, they are familiar with one another. I'm sure through practices and workouts have great familiarity and will be solid. Girls trying to get some shade created for them for their changeovers. Shade will be at a premium here today. The sun is rising. We get 30 minutes away from high noon here on the east coast of the United States. Here's a look at what we've had and what we have to come yet today. It was an easy straight set 6-0-6-0 victory for Andy Lapthorne in our opening match here on center court. As mentioned, we have the women's doubles right now, followed by what will be an amazing men's doubles and followed by what will be an amazing men's doubles. So a lot of doubles here today, really transitioning into the Uniqlo doubles masters portion of the competition. Little bit of singles play early, a lot of doubles play late. 
So we have a full day, full slate of great world-class wheelchair tennis here at the Wheelchair Tennis Masters. Year-end event for the third time here at Lake Known at the USTA National Campus. Great way for the planers to finish off the year in the sunshine, playing tennis outdoors letting the breeze blow, and it's Dana Mathewson to open this match serving. First point to Kamiji and Takamura. Guaranteed you will see rock steady baseline play from the Kamiji Takamura camp. Not that you won't see that from Matthewson and Shuker, but you will see a little bit more of a coming forward dynamic, particularly from Lucy Shuker. Big forehand there by Dana Matthewson. Produces the winner and 15 all. Tough to hit a winner from that position on the court. But Dana, as strong as she is, has the ability. She gets to a good location. The ball is lively. Takamura doing a great job of throwing that one up and over. Just the early going, but she appears to be strong and solid over there on the deuce side. Of there, just wide, but a good approach. Right shot, just missed the mark. Thirty all. Shot by Shuker forces the air from Takamura, and you will see that from Lucy Shuker as well. Some of the greatest, best hands in women's wheelchair tennis. The ability to pull a player in, which might be a specific tactic here today, as both the Japanese players would prefer to stay behind the baseline and ground stroke and grind out points, luring one of them in be a very good strategy. And here's an example right now. Uh, you gotta go right back hard. Can't avoid her there. Gotta go back to her. And that's why. Gotta get more of that. Their strength is from the baseline. You get one of them up, you pin them, stay on them, even if they make a volley or two, typically not gonna be lethal. here on that baseline, putting Shuker and Matthewson up against the wall. Great mobility skills by all four, and 
That's the Takamura air there. Gives Mathewson and Sugar an advantage point in the opening game. That's going to be a flyer in game one to Matheson and Shuka with the hold. Good start. Quick exchange of sides of the court. It'll be Yui Kamiji serving for the team of Kamiji and Takamura. job there. Everything looking pretty clean and smooth so far on the Matthews and Shuker side of the fence. That's Dana Matthewson finding the baseline with the big, heavy topspin backhand. Just like that, it's love 30. All smiles and giggles from Matthewson and Shuker so far. Keeping it loose. Loose is good. Just missed there with the slicing backhand from Shuker. Cleared the net. And some nasty intentions right there. 4 hand long by Matthewson gets us back to 30 all. Too quick on the wheels. Shooter's drop shot. 
Although a good idea, not quite executed well enough. Meiji pounces, rolls the easy forehand winner at the open court, and it's 40-30. Need to see more of Shuka going forward, just a little bit better execution. That'll keep the Japanese team off balance. Great return there by Matthews. It stretches Kamiti out on the forehand side, not strong enough to get it back, and we go to Deuce. Deuce. Looks like we're getting into one of these locked in back and forth battles. Big strike there by Shuker, just long. Next one. Here we go. Just misses the mark. Well struck. by Lucy Shooter with a swinging backhand volley. Well played by forcing the action and getting into the blue. It'd be nice to see more of that across the spectrum of the women's doubles game, more attacks inside the blue instead of four players in the green. get the feeling that there's a force field across the baseline that doesn't allow these players to cross over into the blue, which would allow them to create better angles, get in, make some volleys and overheads. Still the evolution of the women's doubles game that we've yet to see over the course of the evolution of wheelchair tennis. The next step needs to be taken. Out. 
Oh, yeah. Beautiful shot by Dana Matthews right there. Strong there. Real nice, easy finish by Yuji Kamiji. We're gonna go back into Deuce. Let's go again. Sorry, I'm sorry. There's the hold by Kamiji and Takamura. It took a while, but they got there eventually. And it is one all. And I think we're in for a long one here on center court. Centered up ball there, right through the gut of the Japanese team by Lucy Shuker. Lucy doing a great job of sensing, putting the team at risk. Goes in there to the tee, does a nice job of finishing. And that forehand from Kamiji just long, not enough whip. Not enough snap, not enough spin. She takes a couple shadow swings to remind herself of what she wants to do there as she sits in the shadows for just a moment, a little quick break from the sun.
the back end. Again, the positioning from where Matthewson hits that shot puts the added pressure on Takamura and Kamiji. Can't emphasize enough continuing to get into the blue part of the court. Be what adds the pressure, delivers a little bit more lethality to the court. 40 love for Matthewson and Sugar. Take that one and force a little action there. Doesn't come up with it. And it's 2 1. Shuker Matthewson on the changeover. Great point right there. Probably the best point we've seen so far of the match, the dynamic. Dana makes a good shot there. Goes hard at Yui, but Yui with the answer, like a two-handed backhand volley right there. She had the answer, but that should not detour that from being the approach. Just maybe get that ball down a little bit with a little bit more spin to attack the chair of Kamiji instead of the racket. Right shot. Great speed from Kamiji to get the exceptional drop shot by Shuker.
Lucy shoot. Driving Takamura into the side fence with the swinging forehand volley. Just love that she has the courage to hit that shot. Such a dynamic shot right there. Really adds to the variety of the game. Break chances for Matthewson and Schuker. Take a 3-1 lead here. Early going to the first set. Fault gives the team of Matthewson and Schuker the 3 1 lead. Just long there. The ball that ate Matheson up, good thing. They got the call. EG going strong there. Right back to Matheson, the server. Lucy on the half volley pickup. Such a brilliant shot right there. And that's the whole point about getting into the blue, taking away time. Most of these players just so good if they have time receiving a ball from back in the green, but tough to read where it's going. You're half volleying a ball from the tee right there. Ball's past you before you have a chance to get on it. Again, 
Huger, I think, pressing the action, changing the dynamic of the court is what's got the Takamura and Kamiji team a little bit disrupted. Trying to avoid her forces them to be shot makers, not just throw one up to the middle of the court and survive. Have to be precise. A little bit more pressure then. Plus it disrupts rhythm. Big right there with the forehand. Slight little miscommunication there by Matthews and Schuker. Still with a 40-30 advantage and a chance to go up 4-1. And Kamiji with the forehand air on the return of serve. No spin. Ball flies 4-1. Matthews and Schuker. Yui Kimiji to serve down one game to four here. Team of Shuker and Mathewson. Been strong, been a little bit more dynamic than the Japanese duo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. First point, game six here.
Marcus and Shuker not happy with the line call, but it's going to stand and it's going to things at 30-15 for the team of Kamiji and Takamura. Takamura. Fairly easy hold for Kamiji and Takamura. Still a two-game advantage for Mathewson and Shuker, 4-2 serving. Looking to get back on track and continue to extend the lead here, not let the Japanese duo get back in this set. Created a nice gap of 4-1 here. Don't want to lose that. Clean, deep return there by Sakamura. Takamura. Served there by Lucy Shuker. Just seemed to kind of get away from her. Uncharacteristic. 15, doesn't find 20, the, the line or the court. And it's quickly a couple of break points here for Kamiji Takamuro to get back here into this match and get things on serve. They stay calm, cool, and collected. Get to the changeover down just a game now, having erased the 4-1 lead created by Matthewson and Shuker in the early going.
went like this. I mean, he went, he went like the door, so he could have done it. Tough service game last time for Takamuro, but we'll see at this critical moment here. She can get loosened up a little bit. Still looks a little tense on her service game as she misses with the first one. quickly reading that anticipating all that mobility work she puts in paying off Acceleration to bring that one down in off the racket of Takamuro. And we're back to 15 all. Critical game here. Four all. Makes the team of Shuker and Matthewson wonder where did that 4 1 lead go. But if they can kind of hold things down here and get to five first. A couple of cracks at closing this first set out. Twice, says Luki Shuker. <laughs> like that one would have been four feet deep, but I'll just take the volley winner instead. It looks better on the scorecard. Volley winner versus unforced error for your opponents. Take the volley winner, Lucy. Nice job. Now 15-30. seizing it just past Lucy Schuker. There's why you get a 
player that's uncomfortable leaving the baseline up while you put the attack right back on him. Break opportunity. Swinging volley, that's been effective today. That's been one of the great offensive weapons we've seen from the team of Sugar and Matthewson. She has been very effective with that today. Drop shots have cost her a little bit, but the swing volley's been on point. in the singles that shot is getting to the point of patented right now by her great addition to her arsenal that shot all day love 15. great angle there by the lefty no response from Matheson wise to get off that exchange right there Still the advantage to Sugar and Matthewson, but nice, nice break right there by the team of Kamichi Takamura.
crunch time here in the first set. 5-4 Matthews and Shuker, but Kamiji Nakamura not going away quietly. Left-hander Kamiji here serving. Gets their team off to 15-love start here. Attempt to try to get this thing to 5-all. Great hit. Nobody there to get it early. Advantage lost. Ball should have been followed up. A lot of options from Shuker. And finishes the second time around there with a nice volley, and that's why somebody up creating havoc on the court can be so effective. That's it, Lucy. 15 all. Doesn't quite get enough spin. It's just a couple of inches long, but it's enough. For a slight advantage to Matthewson and Shuker here, 1530. I'm here, Kamiji up and over Shuker. Matthewson not being able to track it down. Kamiji did such a nice job of holding the ball. Has options, could go cross there with the forehand. Expose Dana on the cross court or up and over. Dana stuck kind of trying to guess which one. 30 all. Misses on the execution. Point away now from five all. 4 1 lead. My Matthews and Sugar seems a long time ago. from there. Should have been up earlier to pick that off. Missed the opportunity having put Kamiji on the wall. And now five all here in the first. So we're back to where we started, 0-0, zero, zero, and now we're five all, but things are getting a little bit more critical. I don't know that there'll be as much loose giggling at five all as there was in the early going. Getting 
out in crunch time right now. Yes. Each well executed shot, each error gonna cost a little bit more. Kamiji knowing what to do has had the answer on every one of Sugar's drop shots so far today. She's gone through them, she's gone over them, and with that little angled backhand volley, she's gone around them. Just too good. Forehand winner down the line past Shuker. Not quite sure why the team of Shuker and Matthewson are continuing to put the ball on the racket of Kamiji. But I'm sure it's something they might want to discuss sometime soon. Force Nakamura to beat you down the stretch. Don't give it to the veteran. serve and then that's pretty much it. Matthews in air. What's the team of Matthews and Shuker? In a tough spot here now. 15.40, two break, two break points for Kamiji and Takamoro to take the late lead here in the first set. there by the Japanese team. One break point erased. Still a little work to do here to get it back to Deuce, settle things down again.
Oh, Sugar with a change of mind right there. I can see it from here. It was a change of mind right at the last second. Doesn't get the results she wanted from either one of the decisions. Time moment here for Saki Takamuro to hold serve. Grab this first set for her and her partner, Kamiji. Backhand rotation ends up ultimately on the racket of Takamuro. She finds that. The net, much relieved. Matthewson and Schuker breathe a little easier with the opening point here. Errors down the stretch have gotten us this far. Anything that they can kind of get going in their direction would be helpful. Big serve there, Saki Takamuro. Shook her a little bit late, kind of surprised her there. One of the biggest serves, probably the biggest she's hit all match here. What a time for it. Gained her composure here and now 30-15. Stay aggressive, get to a good location, 
good things happen. 30 all. See if Takamoro can continue to the, the strong serves. Position on the wheels there again makes a little bit of a late, ill advised adjustment in her game plan. Throws that one long, and now it's a break chance for Matthewson and Schuker to get this thing to a tiebreaker. is the break chance. No response from Matthewson. We're at deuce. High tension here on center court. Women's doubles. Must win match for both teams. many options for Kamiji right there. She can go cross and be trouble. She can go middle, be trouble. She has had all the answers in that spot right there today. forehand and now another chance for Kamiji and Takamura.
Takamura forehand, and it's again a break point and opportunity for Mathewson and Sugar to force the breaker. Breaker here in the first set. Six games all. Kind of set it from one game all. This was going to be a dog fight here today. Every bit of that. Matthews off to the 4 1 lead here in the first set. Gets erased. Kamuro, Kamiji get it to 6 5, but can't close. And now we go to the breaker. Momentum shifting ever so slightly back to Mathewson and Schuker, but we'll see how it fluctuates here in the tiebreaker. error off the backhand of Kamiji. One love. Good on the forehand side, sees an opening, seizes it. Puts a swing on it, finishes pretty easily. One all.
tracks it down, finds the line. Matthewson backing up, not able to handle it. It's 3 1, Kamichi Takamura. here in the tiebreaker as it's now 5-1. Only go to seven on this one, so better get busy here pretty quick. Got to hold the team to five here for at least three straight points. Let them get to six anytime soon in the next one or two. That's a problem. Swing so slightly. Come on. Talk we got this. Come on. Funky sport tennis. Momentum swings happen. They start crashing in. They're tough to get off your back. But again, haven't gotten the six so early. Anything can happen. One little error, one little miss right now. And it's set for Kamiji and Takamura. Between 
bounce there. Come on. Come on. Pays off. Gets the ball to Takamura, who makes the air. Yeah, just like that. Come on, Get it tight. There we go. Come on. Come on. We'll see Shuker sir, serving at 5-6 to keep this breaker alive. Epic comeback that would be here. Way down. Straight errors from them that allowed Shuker and Matthewson to just kind of get back in the fight, and here they are at six all. Full of momentum. Shuker again pressing the action at net. Well, that's just the first set. <laughs> Stick around. We've got plenty more here on center court. Ladies doubles. That was as good as it gets, at least for tension. Yeah. 
Played Paul. What a dry volley that was. Fuck. That was so good. Oh. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh. Good. Huge man. That's a great boy.
know what the second set will provide to us, but the first set had a little bit of everything. The girls come out with a lot of good energy here at the opening start. This second set, Miji and Takamura still pr probably shaking some heads, scratching, wondering how that first set got away from them. 6-1 up in the breaker.
that's only point number one of the second set, so dig in. Looks like we'll be here a while, but that was a good dynamic point. A lot of free swinging from all four participants. Everybody trying to find their groove here in the early growing in the second. Everybody looked pretty strong, and it was the Matthews and forehand that looked strongest of all at the end there. And it's the Takamura answer with the big strong forehand cross court that gets things to 15 all. bit aggressive there. Get a hold of an extra ball in the center of the court there. Not getting the snap on that backhand. To produce any height, finds the net, 30 all. Sail there. And that's going to give game number one to Kamiji Takamura. and deserve. Kramer out wide, misses the mark, 15 love, Matheson and Sugar.
there once again and hasn't missed the mark all day here. She gets a read on the short balls. She pounces. As if the swinging volleys haven't been good enough for Lucy Shuker today, she gets the added bonus of the let cord winner. Happily take it in the moment. Gets her team set up at 30-15. No spin there from Matheson. Gets it to 30 all. A little bit rushed on that. Nice deep return there from Kamiji. Another. Missed forehand return by Takamuro. Well, the frame on the first one, too much string on the second one. Chance for a hold here and to get it to one all. Beautifully executed forehand return there, catching Shuker. Has to be really good, and it was. Forehand return of serve error from Takamori in this game. Too good. Yeah. Up and over the top. Too much spin. Too much wind at the back. Pushes that ball to the back fence for the winner. We're back to Deuce.
Nakamura looking to assert herself there aggressively. Comes up again with another forehand error. Great steady play there by Dana Mathewson in particular. Handling the lion's share of the balls there in that exchange. Good communications, good choices across the board there from Shuker and Mathewson. Now a chance to hold. Sideline, and it's a big hold. Matheson and Shuker as we get things evened up at one all here in the second set. Line. 
line, and it's 2 1. Back to the shooter. Lucy Schuker to serve up two games to one. there in favor of Meiji and Takamura. And it's settled down to 15.30 here.
shot there. Isaki Takamura. Shuker kind of taking control of the net. Once again, starting it off with the swinging volley. Pulls Kamiji out wide. Exposes a lot of options on the follow up. Deuce.
gonna be a little errant there. It's just a 15 all. opportunity there to kind of really stretch things out and take full command of this second set here. But as this match has unfolded, kind of par for the course, it's 3-2. Matthew Center for Sugar. Dana Matthewson to serve. Three games to two. Important for them to stay in lead here. Keep the pressure on. find the consistency on the forehand. It has moments where it's highly effective. It seems to just kind of go away. She keeps swinging it though, gotta admire that. It has not really backed off, it just hasn't found full form. And it's Matthewson and Shuka recognizing going right back to Takamura. Hard time controlling things from that side of the court if the wind continues, although in the moment it is all of a sudden just completely died down, gone dead out here, so not a factor again. Like somebody turned off a switch. 
And it's Takamuro sitting on the wide serve by Mathewson. Has the answer with the angled forehand return of serve winner. But 30-15. chance to get this thing to three all. And the forehand slapped into the bottom of the net there. Gets us locked at three all here in the second. Eiji taking control here. The ability of Mathewson and Schuker to get the ball away from the world number two. Makes him pay the price here in the first point.
fly just long there. And a much needed point for Matthewson and Schuker right there to kind of settle things down a little bit. Quite a string of them from Kamiji and Takamuro. lift kicks things back here to 30 all Right there off the racket of Matthewson and a great point. That's Kamiji and Takamura who grind it out. Get the unforced air off the forehand of Matthewson and now a chance for 4-3. serve from Takamuro. Matthewson not in position. And it's 4-3. Kamiji Takamuro in the second.
Shoku to serve here, down three games to four. She comes out firing, catches the net. We'll see if they can take advantage of that side, which has proved to be the superior side for winning games so far. The wind is now re-engaged again. with the swinging volley that just goes long. Great get by Dana Matthews, a great extension. Throws one up, stays alive. Big get that right there to get it to 15 all. Not enough spin from that side. Ball flies just a little bit long. Need to make that adjustment over there. Haven't quite got it dialed in yet. Tape. Trying to press the action. And now, 1540 for the team of Kamiji and Takamura to potentially take a 5 3 lead here in the second. We'll 
We'll see if Sugar and Matthews can dig in like they did during the tiebreaker and muscle out a couple of games here. Going to be a little bit tougher, a little longer road back. Favors Kamiji and Takamuro. Take a quick 15 love lead here. This game. Potentially to force three sets here. It's a quick Kamiji error there that gets things back to 15 all. Open line this time. Sees Kamiji leading middle once again. Finds the forehand down the line for the winner. A step closer to getting this thing tied up at five all. A couple of big forehands by Dana Mathewson right there in that game down the stretch. But it's Kamiji and Takamura still with the lead, five four.
it's now Matthewson who had the hot hand to finish up that last game, serving to send this to five all. See if the hot hand remains on the racket of Damon Matthewson. stretch here, yeah, especially after a couple of quick errors, the likely target will be Takamura. Amazing, what an angle, not sure it was exactly planned like that. Matthewson and Sugar will take the outcome. Take a 40 love lead here. A critical game to get it to five all. anything from the first set tiebreaker can't predict anything here down the stretch big swings have happened both ways in this match pressure shifts to Takamura on her serve and no answer there too good by Takamoro on the angle past Shuker.
great angle there by Dana Matheson. The reliable Takamuro backhand. Breaks down one time there. We go to 15 all. Advantage at 40-30 in opportune time for Takamura to throw in a double fault there. Big points down the stretch from this point on. Five all, deuce, nothing but big points, every one. They have a great impact on the outcome here, either in this match ending in two or going three. Second double fault in a row for Takamoro. She finds a bad time to get the serving yips. Four straight misses here. Matthewson. Wise to look for something in the middle here. There it is. That's going to fly, and it's going to be 6 5, Matthewson and Schuker. Juker serving for the match, up 6-5 and one set to love.
Got a green gun. Oh, yes. Uh, okay, hold on. Crunch time. Lucy Schuker serving 6 5 up a set love. On the side with the wind. closer to the finish line here at 30 love. Too good for Matheson down the middle. All set up by the shooter serve. And it's triple match point for Matheson and Shooter. Playing with big confidence. Takamura and Kamiji, who, much like Shuker and Matthewson, have to start stringing together points right now. You. Lucy a little overzealous there on the forehand. Gives one back real quick. Have to continue to show the patience that they've shown to get him to this point. And now it's 40-15. Back on the game plan. Serve. Get on the racket of Takamura. Quickly, a couple of those match points are erased. A couple of easy errors unforced, both of them. Just like the tiebreaker in the first. Some opportunities here. Squandered, but still a match point. You. Could be trouble there for the win. There it is. Game set match. Matthews and Shuker on the sun ball that Shuker couldn't handle. And it's ultimately the moon ball that ends it from Matthewson. 7 6, 7 5. Dana Matthewson, Lucy Shuker. Stay tuned for our on post interview, uh, on court post match interview. Thank <laughs> you. 
Fish and chips or uh, bangers and bangers. Fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, congratulations on an amazing victory here today. Let's start with the tiebreaker in the first set. Down 6-1. Where do we go from there? Take it, Dana. Well, it was my serve. I remember. And historically, I feel like I'm very strong from the baseline. I'm not always with serve. So I was a little bit nervous, I can't lie. But I hit two really good serves, got some free points. And then Lucy went in, hit a drive volley. I don't remember much after that. It it's all great. it's all a blur after that. Yeah. And now, next thing you know, it was seven. It was eight six. Yeah, okay. Just kept plugging. Yeah, I mean that really was an amazing comeback. You don't see those often from six one down. So really, a great job by you two to get that first set. And then the second set, you're down again, and you had to battle back to get it to five all. Then ultimately got over the top and got it to seven five. So kind of take us through what was ultimately the strategy in those critical moments, Lucy. Why don't you start?
start with that. What do you guys kind of come up with as your game plan? I think we've just worked really hard on the teamwork. So like communicating, moving, switching, it allows both of us to strike. Like, I mean, Dana's striking such a, a big ball um, and bearing it as well. So I think that really worked in our favor. And even though at times we were down, we were still coming together and still believing and still just trusting each other. Um, to me, that's key. Like, it's doubles. Yeah, that is probably one of the keys to doubles. I think I heard that somewhere or <laughs> like read it somewhere in like a good. book or something like that. All well, right, we, now. We did have like technical strategies too. It's a secret. Yeah, yeah, no, we can't. We don't want to give that No, stuff away. can't. A girl so, never tells. Uh, no, correct. <laughs> but like, maybe the most important question of the day after this plane goes over <laughs> right here. Are you done for the day? Are we shopping or are we poolside? Are we eating? Are we going for a coffee? What are we doing? What's happening post-match? I don't know. Hopefully Satoshi doesn't make me go back in the gym. I think I heard something about that. Strength and conditioning. Guns. <laughs> they don't come for free, Lucy. But first, I'm having lunch. I don't know what Lucy's doing, but I'm eating. Yeah. Lunch, get changed. Yeah. Stay out the sun because I think we've just had enough. How long was it? Long enough. Anyway, it was a great match. Congratulations. That was a big win. Obviously, you guys know the ramifications about a loss there, yep. but a win there puts you in a good position. So congratulations. Go enjoy the rest of your day. Thank it was you. really fun to watch that match today, girls. Nice Thanks. work. So it fell under the good category? Not sure.
Is that a warm call? A little bit. <laughs> Need anything, Paul?
Welcome back to Center Court and our live coverage of the Wheelchair Tennis Masters sponsored by NEC and Uniqlo. It's day four and match number three here on Center Court and we've got a good one. It's men's doubles as we continue on in our quest to crown a Uniqlo doubles masters champion. And right now we have an outstanding men's doubles match. Martin de la Puente, Spain. Gustavo Fernandez from Argentina against a couple of lefties, Dermot Bailey and Tokito Oda of Japan, Bailey from Great Britain, and it's the 15-year-old Oda making his Masters debut, and I'm gonna tell you, I uh, haven't had a lot of looks at this kid yet, but I've been very aware of him roaring up the rankings and announcing his presence as potentially the next great player from Japan, one day possibly being the next, dare I say, Shingo but this kid is spectacular. He is just young. He's the number one junior in the world, but don't be fooled. He doesn't play like a junior. He's been taking it to the men on the tour uh, down the stretch. As the season unwinded throughout the summer, had some great results, and he is somebody to keep an eye on here. But he will be up against a tough test from the veteran Fernandez, and now slowly but surely the veteran Martin De La Puente, former world junior number one himself, now firmly supplanted himself inside the top 10 for the first time this year and earned his right to come here and represent himself in this country at the Masters. A couple of lefties in Tokito Oda and Dermot Bailey and a couple of big hard-hitting right-handers from Fernandez and De La Puente. 81 degrees, little bitty clouds in the sky, a little bit of wind that's been coming up and down. There's our first crack at the humidity, normally much higher than that here in the state of Florida, but it's the time of year where that settles down finally, gives us a little bit of a reprieve, and we just enjoy the sunshine and the cool air, cool being relative. Oda youngest player to ever win an ITF-1 Swiss Open this past summer. Remarkable achievement for a young man. So, thanks to one of my statisticians for getting me that information. You never know where this info is going to come from, but you take it when you get it, and you pass it along. Thank you, Brian Martin. Drop the name there. Brian comes in out of nowhere, gives me a little info, and I appreciate it, so i got to give him the props, despite the fact that he's wearing black on a hot summer day. Kind of an interesting route here for these two teams. As we get ready to kick off and see them employ their skill sets. Day and Pfeiffer in world group in this men's group B that are kind of at the top of the heap and the rest vying for that coveted second spot to get out of this group. But it was De La Puente and Fernandez who had to provide a walkover to Spargen and Van Dorp on day number one. And it was Huday and Pfeiffer who beat Bailey and Oda. And now both of these teams desperately needing a win to have any chance whatsoever to move out of this pool play. Expect some big time fireworks here on center court. All four capable of some big boy tennis. Even the young man from Japan. The, the team of Bailey and Oda to serve first. Double dose of lefty here today from those guys. Looks like it's gonna be the kid. We'll just call him that. It's a good nickname for Ken Griffey Jr., the kid. So we might as well get this kid a nickname right now. Baby-faced Oda. Go ahead, go ahead. 
And everybody getting a little involved here on point number one. Ultimately, it's the Bailey error that gets us the first point of the match, but you can see that there's going to be some dynamics on the court. No fear from Oda as he attempted to press the action into the court. No fear from De La Puenta. Both going forward willingly early. Oh. Fernandez getting the first look at that Oda forehand, gives it a nod of respect and like admiration and says, okay kid, I got gotcha. you. I'll be on the next one. But you get that one for free. shot gets a little bit more than what he wanted. He gets the net cord assist. Fernandez not able to chase it down. Yeah. And the replay apology tour begins. 40-30 for Oda Bailey. there by the newly formed partnership of Oda and Bailey. Well, eventually work that out. Recipe is recipe for success, which is really his recipe. Yes. 
good. More disaster for the rest of the tour, that Bailey. Backhand's gonna fly along, but the kid won five tournaments this year, all on play. And as mentioned, the biggest being an ITF won the Swiss Open over the summer. Also has an ITF two, an ITF three, and a couple of futures, so. What a run he went on to roar up the rankings and get himself up to 13 in the world here. And without much time, no doubt he'll be in the top 10. Probably going to be one of the youngest people ever to achieve that illustrious status. Fernandez, no answer for Bailey. Get leveled at 15 all. Inside the baseline. They don't get the call. side of the court instead puts one in the net. Some nasty intentions for that overhead didn't turn out the way he wished. But still 40-30 for Fernandez de la Puente. And the Bailey air. De La Puente and Fernandez out to a two love lead. Oh, okay. Same. Oh, but I can't first look here at Dermot Bailey serving from Great Britain. There by Bailey for the winner. That's the outstretched arms of Fernandez. Prove 
on the last one. It's a little too overzealous there. Drives the backhand through the baseline. And get leveled at 15 all. Just out. Near miss there by Bailey. Who gives the team of De La Puente and Fernandez 30-15 lead here. It's going to be three love for Fernandez. De La Puente just a little too much steady on that side of the court right now. Definitely some firepower from the two lefties, but a little lack of consistency and ultimately in doubles. That's what generally leads to success. Gustavo Fernandez at 27 years old, serving here at 3-Love. I don't know what that says about things if you're the old man of the group at 27. Already. Multiple Grand Slam winner and experienced veteran on the court. A few of these young guys would be wise to model themselves after Gustavo Fernandez. Players on the tour respected any greater than him. Work ethic, tenacity, discipline, any positive right. attribute you can think of. He generally possesses it. 
probably because of talking nicely about him, he goes ahead and misses a backhand. And what started out as a couple of kids just having a cross-court hit ends with a around-the-post Gustavo Fernandez winner, the second one we've seen so far in this tournament. It was the long rally, and it was De La Puenta who starts the action with the drop shot. The angle, and we'll just take that. Thank you very much, says Gustavo Fernandez. We'll go straight to the highlight reel. And the big backhand error there by Bailey. Gives a four love to De La Puenta and Fernandez. Make it, and it's a quick 15 love to date the point and Fernandez. wide there from the De La Puente backhand. I would have to kind of make a small little correction in announcing that Gustavo Fernandez is the old man of the group here. Dermot Bailey also 27 years old, so equally ancient. And it's 15 for Oda, 22 years old. Martin De La Puente. Oh. Change in the cross court. It's De La Puente just a little too steady. That's what seven more years of training will get you. Not 
too good from Dermot Bailey there with the wind at his back. All that spin gets it up and over the head of Martin De La Puenta. And we're evened up here at 30 all. Not too many opportunities to win a game here yet for Oda and Bailey. They've been hanging around, but coming up short in the bigger moments. some incredible juniors come up through the years to include Martin De La Puenta, Alfie Hewitt, uh, or Ruben Spargen, uh, Jeff Van Dorp, some of the top junior number ones, Niels Vink, Sam Schroeder, just to kind of give you the list of the most recent junior number one in the boys division, but not sure I've seen one as coolly accomplished as Young Oda. The fact that he's a lefty adds even more of a issue to things. Chance for Bailey and Oda to get up. But it's still Dale Puenta. And Fernandez in charge here as they get another one and go to 5-0 on the scoreboard. Bailey and Oda yet to break through. down of the action that we've had today. Looks like Andy Lapp, well, we started with here, Andy Lapthorn on center court with a convincing straight set 6-0, 6-0 victory. It's David Wagner over Silva, 2-0. And Sam Schroeder straight sets over Brian Barton. And Niels Vink split sets with Koji Sugino, but comes out on top and will advance. And in today's doubles, it's the number one seeds, Dita de Groot and Anique Van Koot with straight set victory over Monjane and Cabriana. And it's Matthewson and Schuker, the match we just watched here. Exciting 7-6, 7-5 victory over Kamiji and Takamuro. And our last match of the day here after this men's doubles will be Alfie Hewitt, Gordon Reed, top seeds here. Dynamic duo from Great Britain versus Alexander Cantaldo from Chile and Casey Ratzliff from Wichita, Kansas via Birmingham, Alabama, where he's currently serving as assistant coach to the Birmingham men's tennis team. University of Alabama, Birmingham. UAB Blazers.
bit of a frame action there from young Oda. It's now 30-15 to De La Puente Fernandez. Two points, now one on the Bailey air from taking the first set six love. Just not enough experience over there on the left-handed side of the court. A lot of talent, and then doubles, the teamwork, the game plan, the discipline, the structure often prevails. We're seeing that here today from De La Puente and Fernandez. Quick double fault by De La Puente. Means we're at 40-30 and still a set point. communication there from the the duo and that hurts and that set they will have to regroup go back to work here and see what they can do to break through a little bit not going to be in big chunks but little bitty pieces would be good 6-0 for De La Puente and Fernandez set number one Dermot Bailey to serve here, kick off the opening game of the second set. into the net. Bailey giving him the nod, doing the right thing. Keep swinging. Stay on it. Stay aggressive. Going to send the young 15-year-old forward into battle here on the first serve.
a slice. That finds that this time gets us to 15 all. to the line there. Fernandez not thinking it was on the line, but call's gonna stand. 30-15 for Oda and Bailey. Great shot there by Dermot Bailey. Has to be to get past Fernandez that easily. And now a couple points here to get on the board. Break that run that they the point that Fernandez have established here in the first set. First serve would be helpful, but misses again. And there it is. Just what the doctor ordered for Team Oda and Bailey. Much needed, just kind of breakthrough game. Get on the board. Now, he is, can they back it up? String a few together here. Turn there, deep right into the body of Fernandez. Not able to answer. Momentum swing here, small but important here for Oda and Bailey. Just gotta cut down on the unforced errors. Kinda plagued them in the first set. And there's another one. it through the middle. Fernandez does a nice job of taking his time, allowing his partner to get back into position. Expert, veteran play, rushes that point. De La Puente's out of position, takes his time. Right here. This is the one great get by De La Puente here. Now watch Fernandez. As De La Puente is getting out, takes his time, doesn't rush, allows his partner to get back into position, sets himself up, and then finishes through the center right there. Great job there by the veteran Argentinian. Back to live action here. And that's going to go long. And it's 40 15. De La Puente and Fernandez. Struck, flattened out backhand there by Dermot Bailey. All those 
in attendance, kind of giving it a nod. A little bit of respect for that shot. Few too far in between for him, though. And the young lad from Japan sends that one a little wide. And it's one all here in the second set. Quick there on the forehand. Takes it into the net. But still seems to remain very well composed. Haven't shown much frustration or even lack of confidence. He tries to go big and goes big long. And it's a quick 30 love lead here for De La Puente and Fernandez. like that. It's De La Puente and Fernandez, 40 love here, kind of back in control after giving up that first game of the second set. Kind of right back on track, having settled things down, and now three points with a chance to go up 2-1 and kind of reestablish themselves as the top dogs here on the court. And that miss hit backhand will do it. Break it, love. Thank you. 
No, me vuelvo a decir. No para sentir uno con No, no, es flaco. Pero es una cosa para poder estar consciente de otra cosa. Quick 15 love for De La Puente and Fernandez. Off the return of serve error by Oda. same error that the young guys have been making across the way. He's smart enough to know that one needs to just get back and play. <sighs> the air has come a little bit too quickly there on the side of Oda and Bailey. They give it right back and it continues to leave De La Puente and Fernandez in the lead. as a couple of highlight reel shots have been from Bailey. It's been just too many of those unforced errors there. Taking a big a cut as that mid-court right there on a almost half volley. Tough to be able to do something with that. Zero margin. Forehand of Fernandez. And it's 3 1 de la Puente Fernandez as they continue to take control and command. Three games away from closing this out. Straight sets. Great look there. The Fernandez forehand winner. It's a, finally a first serve from Bailey, but it's a better response from De La Puente. Bailey was actually just a little bit surprised he got the first serve in. Struggling in that department. Might have been firing just a bit. You can sit back and admire that one because it's about as big as it gets right there. It's an absolute bomb up the tee by the lefty. 15 all. Just like that kind of shows the level of inconsistency. Goes from as perfect as perfect could be to bouncing one in his own service box. De La Puente cleaning that up real nice, real easy. Nice set up there by Fernandez. Sets it up right there with the deep forehand. Look at the nice job by De La Puente on the wheels to close the gap. Accelerate into that one with the wheels, not just the racket.
And the double fault gets it to 1540. Two chances here for De La Puente and Fernandez to get up to 4-1. Continue to coast here in the second after one game to Bailey and Oda, game number one here of the second set. Gives the game to De La Puente and Fernandez and puts them fully in charge here 4-1. As if there was ever a doubt after the first set. Seems to be just too much steady on that side of the court. there by Fernandez, but just wide. Might not think that a player of his physical stature would have much of a touch, but he does when necessary, able to soften things up. Game mainly built about and around the power, but very capable of riding the touch shots when necessary. Just a little off on that one. Bailey settling down, playing a little bit more of a controlled game, which is wise. And it's Oda making the backhand mistake there. Getting things to 15 all. to make in the air. Maybe in a more competitive match, and if necessary, De La Puente goes right at Bailey there, but 6041, not a necessity. Great lob by De La Puente. And Fernandez is there to take care of that. Nice teamwork. to see Fernandez miss a shot that he rarely misses, like that backhand right there. I 
think he's actually truly surprised when he misses. It's so infrequent. <laughs> Stay away from that man at the net, not test his skills. He'll learn one day. Be better for it for these experiences right now. The backhand return a serve error, and it's an advantage point for De La Puente Fernandez to go up 5-1. serve error by Bailey and it's 5-1. 6 one and we're one step closer to putting match number four on center court here today. Not if young Oda has anything to say about it on his service game. Probably would like to go out at least getting an opportunity to make a few more returns. Spin Oda on the wheels, not quite enough. Dermot kind of gave up on that, expecting that one to be so much better, and it was a lot shorter than probably Fernandez wanted to be. But Bailey had already vacated the spot, and now it's two points away from game, set, match for Martin de la Puente. And Gustavo Fernandez. long and it's triple match point. task in its game set match. Martin de la Puenta and Gustavo Fernandez. And the partnership of Bailey and Oda. A great experience here, but not a, enough against the big boys. In this match or in their pool play so far, they've struggled a little bit, but take away some amazing experiences. Stay tuned for our post-match interview on court with the winners, de la Puenta. And Fernandez.
Mucho gusto, amigos. Buen partido hoy. You want to do this in Spanish or English? I think English is probably best. <laughs> I appreciate that. Mucho apreciado. Hey, congratulations. Pretty smooth sailing today. Uh, but let's talk about the first the first thing I want to talk about. The young 15-year-old from Japan, Oda. How impressed are you guys with that kid for 15 years old to be on the court with you here today and, and have a pretty good showing? What are your thoughts very, on him? Very impressive. He has an amazing year. I mean, he already played with him in singles. Very tough match. Uh, and he has done some pretty mature things for his age so he's got a lot of times he's got a lot of skills he's uh, he's uh, he has a great physique physically he's he's very good and i think he has a lot to improve and a lot of energy a lot of passion you can see that so it's a great for us i think this is great for the sport this Absolutely. is amazing yeah that's a good thing and i remember when this young man was 15 <laughs> years old and, and had a lot of that same skill yeah. set a lot of that same maturity and look at him now um hey listen martin how much of an influence has that guy next to you been in the development of your career because he's love, been a role model for I a lot love, i mean i i don't say very often because then he's like whoa whoa not about it but i really since the first time he 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 saw me he was very close to me he was like he we even shared the court the coach for 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 many years he was one of the best players in the world and i asked him hey can we share the coach do you man and since the day one he was open to help me to to help me improve uh, being uh, as close as me as possible for for becoming a professional tennis player and i really i can thank him enough for all the things he has done to me and i think this is just the, the beginning. I I really like playing doubles with him. I like I like practicing with him as well. And I I don't know. I hope I hope we can do some good things together. I think that the future is bright. And yeah. uh, Gustavo, those are some really powerful worlds. Yeah, yeah, to hear from, indeed. From Martin, uh, such great respect. But that is a testament to your leadership as a as a player on the tour and uh, taking some young guys under your wing as you have many and just been a great example. So really, uh, great great job by you and a great job for you guys as a team today. It was fun to watch. Uh, wish you well throughout the rest of the week. Any final thoughts as we leave here today? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, just to share a little bit, uh, he's a he, he, I, I've always. Uh, like to the, the the new generations and uh, the new talents and it's it's uh, as it happened with me before uh, it's always nice to have someone to to, to to guide you and for me it's been a pleasure he's uh, an amazing guy he's a, a, one of my best friends uh, and uh, and that for me it's 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 amazing it's it's really great to share these kind of things this professional with the comp the competition what understanding that we're all in this together and it's uh, and he he drive me every uh, as good as his talent is he drive me every every time to be better and better so uh it's it's for me as as he said that he's now i hear that he likes to train with for me it's it's amazing too but because we push together to to be better and that's something we all should have and we enjoy it as friends so that's an extra and and that's something great yeah, totally, totally agree. I mean, this is the good thing about sport. I, you can find some opponents. He, he's beating me. I don't know. I've lost the count, but many times. And then uh, he has. We, we both have good time training, good, good time playing together. We enjoy the competition. I think that's the essence of sport. I mean, uh, seeing uh, people get getting better. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, trying to more rivals I don't know I think it's it's this is that drives you yeah. to be better and better and both push to the limit so that's that's great gracias hermanos mucho gusto thank you, thank you. Thank you both.
you know when the music starts, the action's about to start here on center court as we continue day four coverage of the Wheelchair Tennis Masters sponsored by NEC and Uniqlo. Our last match of the day is a men's doubles between world number ones, Alfie Hewitt and Gordon Reed. We've seen a lot of them so far in the competition. And Alex Cataldo from Chile, Casey Ratzliff from the United States. It's going to be a dynamic match. A couple of young guns against the veterans from Great Britain, and we will get right to the action here shortly. They've completed their warm-ups. They're just taking on a little water before they begin play. I'm Paul Walker. Last match of the day here at the USTA National Campus in Lake Nona, Florida. It's been another great day of competition. We've gone through the quad singles. Well, we'll take a quick look at the weather. Humidity's down earlier than uh, in the report today. It was 54% humidity, now down to 44%. Winds down a tad. Six miles an hour was up to eight a little earlier. Still 83 degrees and sunny, so plenty of heat down there on the court. And we expect to see plenty of heat from these players. As I was about to give you the recap of the day. It has started off with a quad singles. It was Andy Lapthorne straight sets over Kim of Korea. And we transition to a really dynamic women's doubles match with Dana Mathewson and Lucy Sugar coming out victorious 7-6, 7-5 over Yui Kamiji, Saki Takamura. And then we just finished a men's doubles with Fernandez and De La Puente winning easily over Bailey and Oda. Casey Ratz left to serve, point number one. And look how easy it is. Big first serve, stuck forehand volley by Cataldo, and the Brits are on their heels. Not so sure about that. Forty-seven more points to go for Ratzliff and Cataldo. They can make a straight run of it. in their early 20s there partnering up. Ratzliff and Cataldo for the first time here at the Uniqlo Doubles Masters. Of course, longtime partners. Hewitt and Reed. We know what they're capable of. Having finished up the night with them last night, our last match of the night when they took on Michael Sheffers and Tom Engbring from the Netherlands. It's a double fault from Ratzliff that gets us to 15.30, opening game, the first set. all. Both Katesy Ratzliff and Alex Cataldo, 23 years old. Both trying to make their breakthrough. Both been hovering between number 20, number 30 in the world, depending on the week and what successes they've had on the tour throughout their calendar year. Cataldo just a little bit ahead of Ratzliff in the rankings currently. They've been a little bit back and forth throughout their young and impressive careers. It's Alfie Hewitt pressing the action there, taking the return, following it. 
staying on task up at the net, forcing the action. For those paying attention at home, it's Hewitt currently number two in the world and Reed number five in the world. So you do the math. That is a formidable team. Another double fault there from Ratzliff just wide. And it gives the first game to Hewitt and Reed. One of the keys here for the two 23-year-olds will be balls in play, no freebies. The Brits will do enough of earning their own points. Can't afford to be giving them free ones. Make serves, make returns, get points started, go from there. No doubt, always a daunting task to be playing the number one team in the world. On display there by Alfie Hewitt. Also just 23 years old. Seems like he's been on the tour doing great things for a long time, and he has. You forget that he broke through as a teenager. really kind of launched his career in Rio. Having gotten to the gold medal match only to lose to his partner at the time. And still, Gordon Reed, who won the gold in Rio. Since then, they've been as good as they get. Hewitt, multiple time Grand Slam winner as well. Singles and of course, that pairing in doubles been very dominant. Ratzleff continuing to struggle with the Reed serve. And it's a quick two love to Hewitt and Reed. Now it's Casey Ratzliff struggling a little bit to kind of find his form, just get the ball in play. Takes a couple of deep breaths, settles down, looks to get himself under control. Love 40 to Hewitt and Reed. Since that first point, it hasn't been much going well for the team of Cataldo and Ratzliff.
And it's a quick three love to Hewitt and Reed. Alfie Hewitt serving three games to love. He and his partner Gordon Reed up on Casey Ratzliff and Alex Cataldo. Yep. Gets to the foot plate of Reed, no response. We get to 15 all. Right now, I think it would be wise for Cataldo and Ratzliff to find the singles court and just continue to get a groove through the middle, even if it forces the Brits to have to make some winners off that. Fine, so be it. But just find your strings, find the middle of the court of trying to be shot makers. Settle down a little bit. Nice attack there on Hewitt. Gets the air. Since 15 love in the first game, first lead that Ratzliff and Cataldo have had. The return error by Ratzliff. It's just gonna have to slow down a little bit hyper focus on Mr. Wilson. Alfie says, you want to test me? Fine. Up to the task. 
was tested pretty heavily last night by Tom Eggbrink and Michael Sheffers. If you watched any of that match, the guys were throwing bombs. And that just doesn't seem to phase the Brits. two-headed backhand by Hewitt. Not in play officially. Off the miss serve. Gear there by Hewitt, kind of catching Ratzliff. A little bit sluggish there. Made a nice smooth stroke, but then just kind of sat on it. No sitting around when you're on the receiving end from Alfie Hewitt, Gordon Reed. hit there by Cataldo. Reed finally getting involved a little bit as the pairing of Ratzliff and Cataldo seemingly targeting Hewitt, maybe just preferring to see the ball come off the strings of the right-hander versus the left-hander and not wishing to go back and forth. Continue for Hewitt and Reed. Now, triple break point for Five Love. And a clean, easy winner there gives. Hewitt and Reed, the five love. Slow mo there, but not on the accelerated forehand from Reed as he goes up and over the top. Easily drops the ball into the court for the winner.
Gordon Reed looking to close out set number one here. There we go. A little action there from Casey Ratzliff. Just need to see him settle down. Not seeing the best example of his capabilities so far in the early going of this set. Fifteen for the Brits. one without any top spin and get it up and over and in. And it's double set point now for Hewitt and Reed. Taldo takes a rip at it and it's first set. Hewitt Reed, six love. Not much of a challenge so far from Cataldo Ratzliff. Let's see if they can just kind of settle down now, relax a little bit, give us a little bit more of an indication of what they're capable of, because I know it's a lot more, but right now, just been too much. Hewitt and Reed.
Aaron Reed wishing to work a little bit on his swing volleys. Takes that one. Puts it back in play instead of taking what likely would have been an out ball, but not for sure. Either way, the outcome is mostly the same as what it's been. He wouldn't read win another point. with a little bit of the underhand forehand return. Casey a little bit overzealous with the overhead. And in the blink of an eye, 40 love to Great Britain. Magic there, kind of got himself out of a jam. <laughs> Didn't exactly play that one as cleanly as he wanted to, but still the same outcome and three love, nine straight games for Hewitt and Reed. Frustrated 23 year olds over there in the black shirts. Kind of need to get together and come to terms on a bit of an agreed upon game plan of settling down, just putting some balls in play, and take what comes back to them instead of trying to force the action. There is no forcing of the action against Hewitt and Reed. why you put some balls in play. These guys are going to make a few mistakes. They're going to hit some amazing shots. What would you expect from top team in the world? On cue, Hewitt rips the forehand return a serve winner, but you know what? Clap your hands, go back and put another first serve in play. Well done, Alex. There you go. Uh oh, the, the double GB storm the net race. Who could get there sooner? And it's Hewitt with the air on the ball at the foot plate. Well struck by Ratzliff. Deuce. Settling down now, finally. Find in the middle of the court a little bit more. Oh, 
got your line. And there you go. Just keep listening to me, fellas. I'll talk you through it. Settle down. Just keep giving these two great players across the net from you a chance to make a mistake or two. Casey a little bit out of position there. We get it back to Deuce. And another error. Here's another chance for Ratzliff and Cataldo to get on the board. smooth, too high a quality, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Far superior to no balls in play, easy points for the Brits. Make them earn everything. Steady up. stuck backhand volley by Alfie Hewitt there. Hewitt Reed, point away from three love. long deuce game here, just what the team of Ratzliff Cataldo need. Dig in a little bit, stay steady, earn a few points, let the other guys give you a few. shaped that location on the court get into the blue flattening things out for a little bit finishing might be the right approach but right there that ball's got to go up and it's another chance for Hugh and Reed to continue their domination now well, that's flattening out from the proper position on the court and get rewarded difference there. Can't hit that same shot from eight hit eight feet behind the baseline.
Much better point, best we've seen so far today from Cataldo Ratzleff. Showing some patience, showing some good decision making. Now a chance to get on the board and I have earned it. Deuce, but still the points lasting longer, structured a little bit more intelligently. Played with a lot more confidence, patience, much better quality. Well, that's how you get on top of a backhand right there. And it reminds me of a young John Rydberg from the USA back in the day who used to hit that backhand of a similar nature. Hewitt doesn't hit it quite as well as Rydberg, but he's coming along. I think he'll get there one day. another game for Hewitt and Reed. And it's nine straight, 3-0 in the second, up a set, six love. See if the good quality here continues with from Cataldo and Ratzliff. Just gotta stay the course despite the score. Just continue to look to improve the quality of play. Great striker of the ball, just kind of get it reeled in a little bit. Nice finish there by Casey. Sets it up with the overhead. Nice clap from Alfie Hewitt. Job well done.
Hewitt Reed here. A chance to go to four love. Cataldo looking to put one through the chest of Hewitt. Instead puts one through the NEC banner on the back wall. And it's four love. That's taking you, taking what they give you right there. Nicely done from the start with the first serve. Not trying to put on an ESPN highlight reel, just putting together a couple of solid shots. Well done as a team right there from Ratzliff and Cataldo. Reed quietly just finds the corner and gives the Hewitt Reed team two chances to break Ratzliff again. Good serve there by Casey forces the air. And still another break chance for Hewitt and Reed. job there by Alex Cataldo. Again, taking what is available. Getting things settled. Back to deuce. And a game away from the match. As it's Hewitt Reed out 6-0, 5-0. Can't imagine anyone ever losing a match having been up 6-0, 5-0. And 40 love to boot. But I'm sure it's happened somewhere.
There's a chuckling U.S. coach behind me that knows the story. And his name is John DeVores. Hammer time, Alfie Hewitt. Rather noisy error by Hewitt there off the railing. As he looks to send one into the Great Britain coaching staff. Just a little too much reach in there from Alex. Got to get that ball a little bit more in the strike zone. Tough to control that from down there. That's 30-15 to the Brits. Correction, 40-15 after the ace by Hewitt. Two match points here for Hewitt and Reed. Cataldo goes big on the return. Hewitt shakes it off. Knowing that they're still in a nice position to probably close this one out. Forehand goes a little astray and it's back to Deuce. the shoe tops of Alex Cataldo tough to do a lot of damage with that forehand he's strong when it's in his strike zone but from down there that ball's just got to be in play not the location for you to go maximum effort once again you would read for the match third time
time, we go back to Deuce. The exchange between these four continues. He would look to get a little bit more service reps in. Just a little bit wide there off the volley from Radsliff. Match point number four for Hewitt and Reed. And it's Gordon Reed's turn to come up a little bit. Shy, we continue. A little smirk from his partner. <laughs> Great serve by Alpha Hewitt sets things up. Gordon forces the error. And now, match point five. I think there's some sort of a rule if you don't get it done in five, you go back to zero. And it's back to zero it is for the Brits, as they can't believe they still haven't quite closed it out yet, but good job on Cataldo and Ratzliff for not going away, doing their job to keep things alive here. And with the Hewitt error, it's now no longer a match point, but a break point for Ratzliff and Cataldo. And a chance to get on the board here. significantly here as we just cross over 5 p.m. here Eastern time it's going to be long and give Hewitt and Reed their six crack at closing this out what's that old saying sixth times a charm time as Alfie Hewitt <laughs> seems to be just jinxed on these match points. The Brits just kind of can't believe. It'll be lucky number seven here for Hewitt and Reed. Thank you. 
that will do it. And it's seven indeed. Gets us to two sets to love for Hewitt and Reed as they will advance cleanly out of the pool play and top seed in the men's Group A. Stay tuned for our on-court post-match interview with Hewitt and Reed. And we will be back tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern for our full day of coverage. Thank you for joining us here today on day four. Have a good night. See you tomorrow.
Gentlemen, congratulations once again. Here we are in the winner's circle. We're going to start with a math question. I don't know which one of you claims to be the math genius. How many match points did it take to close that out? 105. 105 is the first guess on the table. Alfie? I'm going to go with seven. Say what? Seven. Winner, seven. It was seven. Absolute genius. <laughs> Absolute. Well, he was serving. I was he know, right? I, so I, you I was might, counting every single might one. Have <laughs> but anyway, great job today. Hey, listen, pool play's over, right? As far as I can tell, you've moved on. You're clean through. Uh, best I can tell, out of the other pool, it looks like it's going to be Spargen and Van Dorp. Yep. And uh, what do we know about those guys? Tell us a little bit about them. We know they're dangerous. They beat us here a few years ago. Um, so yeah, we know what to expect. We, we had a practice set against them before the tournament started here, so um, we know they're, they're hitting the ball well, they're confident, so we'll need to, to bring a, a good level to, to get through that. All right, so no surprises. They're not going to be sneaking up on anybody this time, are they? Hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully yeah. not, yeah, because it's going to be you guys, so hopefully not, correct. All right, any final thoughts? You both uh, got some singles action left? Yep. Yep, all right, so we're going to let you get out of here. I know it's been a long day, a couple of days. You might want to do a little extra training. Coaches are waiting, so uh, congratulations on another job well done here today. I'll look forward to seeing you guys back here again, whether it's singles or doubles. You've been doing a great job. Always enjoy the time watching you play on the court. Thanks for your time. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thanks.